Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you, our listeners. Thanks to all of you, including Vince Power, Chris Benito, Jeffrey Zilks, and we got four new patrons over the weekend. So everybody Woo. welcome Don, John, Daniel, George, and Albert. <laughs> John, Daniel, George, Albert. Yeah, it sounds like something you're supposed to say. Four different fast. people, four different people. <laughs> yes. On this episode of DTNS, Apple Intelligence is here. Well, round one is anyway. Plus, the TikTok of the Fediverse comes onto the scene. And can Allison Sheridan replicate her voice with AI technology? She'll tell you about her experiences thus far. <laughs> This is the Daily Tech News for Monday, October 28th, 2024, in Los Angeles at Studio Animal House. I'm Sarah Lane. And I'm Allison Sheridan of the Potfeed Podcast. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. How's everybody doing out there? Uh, it's it, fine. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a, a fun tech week, at least for me, because uh, as I follow Apple News, we've got a fair amount of that, but we've got a fair amount of all sorts of other stuff. And as we always do, let's start with the quick hits. Indonesia has halted the sale of Apple's iPhone 16, citing Apple not fulfilling local investment requirements. People can still use iPhone 16 models. It's not banned to use an iPhone 16 model, and it's also not banned to buy one outside of the country. They just can't be sold within Indonesia itself. The government aims to grow its tech sector by pushing foreign companies to contribute to local production and development instead of importing devices directly. Last week, the Video Game History Foundation, VGHF, said it was disappointed with the U.S. Copyright Office's refusal to grant an exemption to the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, the, our favorite DMCA, to help preserve rare video games. But the VGHF says it will continue advocating for improved video game preservation. The foundation has been a longtime supporter of the Software Preservation Network's SPN petition to receive a DMCA ex exemption, especially for researchers who need access to them and can't do so due to games not being available anymore. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the VGHF saying we're going to keep up the good fight uh, however we can. The Open Source Initiative, or OSI, has released version 1.0 of its Open Source AI Definition, or OS AID, AID, providing a formal framework for what constitutes open source AI. So this is supposed to promote transparency, accessibility, collaboration within AI development, and ensure that both code and data are available for public use and also for improvement. To be considered open source, under this new version, an AI model has to provide enough information about its design so that a human or humans could substantially recreate it. Also has to disclose pertinent details about how its data got trained, the provenance of the data, how the data was processed, and how it can be obtained and or licensed. Sounds like an overall good thing to me. Well, Netflix is rolling out a new feature called Moments, designed to let users revisit their favorite scenes from shows and movies. The feature is now live on Netflix's iOS app Monday with Android to follow. And let's viewers bookmark, save, rewatch, and then share their favorite scenes across Netflix titles. Google may be trying to bring Apple's Dynamic Island-like notifications with Android 16. Android authorities Michelle Rahman, who's also the co-host of our own Android Faithful podcast, reports that Google is testing a new API called Rich Ongoing Notifications with Android 15 QPR1 Beta 3. App developers could use it to display the, those little pill-shaped chips in the status bar with, you know, app icons, custom backgrounds, text and time, all sorts of stuff could be possible. Ramon was able to create some mock-ups for rich ongoing notifications using the command line interface. So early days, but looks promising. I love this. I love it whenever they steal from each other. I think it's great. I mean, that's all we're really doing these days. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's such a cool, a cool tool. I love that the Android friends are going to get it too. Indeed, indeed. I agree. All right. So uh, Apple kicked off its promised, it promised last week that it was going to give us a week of announcements. Uh, so, you know, if, if they're, if they're going to do one every day, today's the day, uh, Monday as we're recording. The M4 iMac offers up to 25% faster performance enhanced graphics, support for Apple intelligence and AI functions in general, 24-inch uh, model, uh, looks 
just like the old one, uh, you know, or the, the one that's currently on sale, now includes USB-C accessories, Wi-Fi 7 support, uh, starts at $1,299, so that's in line with what iMacs are going for already, but also now features Thunderbolt 4 support, options for 16 gigs or more RAM, a nano texture display, a 12 megapixel webcam, and is set to ship on November 8th. Now, Allison, I'm in a I'm in the um, the market for a new Mac Mini. Uh, I was hoping today would be the Mac Mini day. Apparently, yeah. it is not, and it might not be at all this week. So I'm not going to get my hopes up, but I'm pretty sure. But uh, what do you, what do you think about what do you think about it? Do you have an iMac right now? No, we've kind of gotten off the iMac train ever since uh, they made it harder to uh, to use it as an external display when it got older and that sort of thing. So we've kind of separated. Uh, Steve used to always have iMacs, and now he's got a Mac Studio and the Studio Display. So when he upgrades the Mac Studio, he doesn't have to throw away a perfectly good display. But yeah. I want—I want to—I want to make contention with what you said. These are totally different colors, Sarah. They're the exact <laughs> same colors, but in fresh shades of green, yellow, orange, pink, purple, and blue, along well, with the classic silver. Totally different. Totally different. Yeah, it's sort of like it's like it's like uh, when Instagram's like you know, good photo, but like, would you like to enhance it? You know, same photo, but just better. You know, it's like yeah. HDR version of yellow. No, so, so, so yeah, I, it, you're right. There are some subtle differences externally, not much. Uh, the colors, I guess, are being punched up in the way that you would feel like your yellow iMac is slightly different than the one that you had before if you happen to be upgrading. But, you know, these are great machines. I think I, it's, I, it's, I it's really, great that they're getting the love, right? They're getting the M4. That's fantastic. It seems kind of silly that, that the only thing with the M4 was, you know, the iPad Pro. That that seemed kind of strange, right? Well, yeah. It, Actually, well, or did, that, and well, I think that the, that's what kicked off the whole rumors of, like, obviously the Mac line is going to get the M4 because they put it in the iPad Pro. They wouldn't just do that for the iPad Pro and then just be like, well, everybody's... You know, just <laughs> just gonna have to deal with you know M two M three type type things for for everything else. I um I yeah I this is this is a great machine. I I'm with Steve on this one. I have a monitor that is pretty great. I it's an Asus monitor. I've been using it for years. It's 28 inches. It's plenty big for the desk that I'm sitting at right now. So it's like I don't need a new display. I want one, sure, but I don't need one. I've and had discussions with people. My friend Gary is uh, has a 27-inch iMac, the classic 5K iMac from 2017 that everybody loved, and it's just killing him that he has to throw it away, and he's really angry with Apple that they're not making another 27-inch. And I tried to convince him, get the studio display, get a Mac Mini, and you'll be fine, and you never have to throw that display again away again when it's perfectly good. But uh, yeah. you know what? He's out there right now. He's picking out his 20. Uh, he's going to get the 24 inch iMac just to stay in the iMac format. Hmm. Yeah. He just has to decide which fresh shade of uh, color he wants. <laughs> Is it teal or really cool teal? <laughs> you know, depends. Uh, speaking of Apple intelligence, which uh, obviously. Uh, <laughs> We haven't done a lot of, but it's been on our minds. What is what is Apple Intelligence? What is it going to do for the folks who obviously uh, run uh, uh, various platforms such as iOS and iPad OS and Mac OS that would take advantage of this? So it's now out of beta, at least in part. It's sort of the first rollout of what Apple says will be a larger rollout over the next, I don't know, six months, I guess, or so. So, yeah, you've got iOS 18.1, iPadOS 18.1, Sequoia 15.1 on macOS. This is coming first to the U.S., and then you've got select English-speaking regions with expanded localized support for countries Canada, Australia, the U.K., Ireland, New Zealand, and South Africa, Expected in December. And Allison, I know earlier before the show started, you were sort of like, this is a little confusing because <laughs> then we got word that Apple intelligence would start rolling out to EU countries in spring of next year. So 2025. And I think what, what, what it sounds like to me is that if you're in the U S you're kind of getting, you know, you're, you're getting what you're getting. The other English speaking regions that might, be able to benefit from localized support that's rolling out next I and think I other languages know. and other regions rolling out next year. So I think there, there's another subtlety that really messes this up. 
Um, the reason Apple isn't giving Apple intelligence to the EU is because of the digital uh uh, the Digital Markets Act. Uh -huh. And the the iPhone was judged to be a gatekeeper under the DMA. And so they were worried that they'd be forced to allow interoperability with their competitors. However, the Mac was not dominant enough to be a gatekeeper. So my understanding is uh, the EU is going to get Apple intelligence on, on the Mac, Mac earlier. And it's just on the iPhone and the iPad. Well, I don't know where the iPad falls in, but the iPhone for sure won't be getting it until later. So I think we're this tangled language is all because of confusion with what the laws are going to do about it. I mean, there, there, I, I would, uh, you know, it, it is confusing. It is very confusing. Mm -hmm. What was also confusing to me, Allison, this morning, and as I'm looking at my, oh, oh, it's ready. Oh, my gosh, that is so funny. Okay, so <laughs> here, here's the story. So so this morning, I was like, okay, let's, let's um, I'm in the beta program on iOS, but I'm not in the developer program. My colleague on Apple Vision Show, Eileen Rivera, is in the developer program. So she got Apple intelligence early, um, you know, in, in, in beta form. So she's already been through this process. And she explained uh, in a previous show how, you know, there was sort of a wait list, but it didn't last that long, et cetera, et cetera. So this morning, I, I had kind of forgotten about all of that. This morning, I was like, oh, cool. I'll, I'll install, walk the dog. Then I had to do a bunch of other show stuff that was not related to this. And I thought, what I'll do as I eat lunch before the show is go back to the iPhone and look at Apple Intelligence, you know, and it'll be really fresh for our conversation we're having right now. And <laughs> I kind of screwed myself because I was waiting for some sort of like a push notification or, you know, like, here's how you toggle on Apple Intelligence. And I never got it because I had to sign up for the wait list, but I never got a push notification about that either. It was in settings. It wasn't hard to find. But once I did that, I was like, oh, man. You know, I really, I, I could have, you know, uh, saved myself a couple of hours. However, and we were joking, like, it's going to happen during the show. It did. Now, <laughs> here we are. I'm, I'm going to choose. I'm not going to do this right now because we have yeah. things to talk about. But yes. So I did do a little hack to, uh, to get in earlier. I didn't want to do any of the betas. But on Friday, I did the iOS uh, consumer beta, not the, not the developer beta. Did the uh, got on the wait list to get into Apple Intelligence? Got it, and then I played. I played with it a little bit under the beta, but then this morning I just s turned off the beta updates and downloaded the regular one. So I just snuck my foot in, got ahead of the line, and came back. But it sounds like the line was like maybe two hours. It was probably about two hours. I mean, what is this? Okay. Uh, it is weird that you have to be on a wait was, list, though. But it was maybe more like three. I sort of, I sort of equate this to Apple just being like. It's like a Cautious. freeway on ramp, you yeah. know, it's like, it's like, it's it, you know, if everyone's going to run light. in at the same time, everyone suffers. But if we just make sure that, you know, we let, you know, one at a time, everybody, let's all be cool. Then, then Apple, uh, ha has a, has a cleaner rollout and, and fewer, um, fewer complaints about Probably it. Probably a good idea. Probably a good idea. All right, so uh, moving, moving, moving on to TikTok alternatives. You might say, "Oh my gosh, do we need do we need yet another TikTok?" Well, uh, that, that uh, your mileage may vary on that one. But a new alternative to TikTok is called Loops, and it has signups open now. It was developed by a, by a team of former TikTok employees uh, who emphasized that they were looking for creativity and community engagement, but also addressing concerns about privacy and user safety that people might not necessarily feel like they have with TikTok. Maybe you do, but if you don't, this is supposed to be an alternative to that. The platform will offer features like video editing tools, customizable profiles, targeting users who are looking for that alternative to whatever current option they have, whether it's TikTok or something like it. You can sign up at loops.video, which I did this morning. Haven't, haven't gotten too. in yet. Uh, Allison and I, we're, we're both waiting. Um, but a few other notes here. Uh, you have to be 13 years or older, or say that you are, uh, you know, to, to do anything, following, like, um, liking, commenting, sharing your own content. And then, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> a trust score system has uh, a video from, if I'm a user with a low trust score, it might be moderated before it gets published altogether. 
It's That's a little interesting. Un- yeah, I know. Yeah. It's a little unclear, you know, like who's doing that? <laughs> How big is the team? Why is my trust score low? You know, what have I done in the past? Um, but that's supposed to, you know, obviously foster a, a pleasant community. If you have a high score, might be published immediately the way that you would be on another platform. Um, Loops is not integrated with ActivityPub at this time. It's, it's, it's looking to be, says the team. But ActivityPub is, you know, powering Mastodon and PixelFed and PeerTube and a variety of other Fediverse apps. So this is, this is early days, for sure. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, 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 I wanted to get your thoughts, Allison. I don't know how much of a TikTok user you are. I'm a, I'm a, a casual consumer of TikToks. I, I'm not, I, I'm not, I'm not, my account has like one cat video on it, but, <laughs> but, uh, but I, I think, ad- I think competition is good. I am addicted to TikTok. And what's going to be really controversial here is I'm, I'm a big fan of Mastodon and I like the fact that it's not owned by any company and there's no algorithm. So the people I see or the people I follow, if somebody boosts something, I get to see it because somebody boosted it, not because the algorithm decided, hey, this will make her angry. And so I'm completely and totally against the algorithm and I'm away from Twitter. I'm all on Mastodon. It's fantastic. But the best thing about TikTok is the algorithm because I don't actually follow very many people. I just like the stuff I like and I get more of the stuff I like. So I sit there watching, uh, oh, there's a, an account, the dogs were good today. I forget what the real name of the account is, but it's fantastic. You just, you got to find that and watch, definitely follow that one. But I just, I, I see cool disability stuff or accessibility stuff, I should say. I see um, I kittens and puppies and ducks and ducks with kittens. And it's, oh, it's just a I joyful mean- Wonderful place. Yeah, I, I, I think you know anybody who's just sort of like oh TikTok, it's a bunch of people dancing. You really don't you don't understand the breadth of the content on a network like. like TikTok. And even you know I'm I <laughs> you mentioned like good dogs. I mean I Otis uh, my dog has an Instagram account. He doesn't have a TikTok, but he has an Instagram account. Therefore, we get a lot of dog stuff served to us over on Instagram, <laughs> which is wonderful in its own way. But yeah, TikTok is, I, I have friends who are uh, my age or, you know, around there, um, extremely intelligent, and they get their news off of TikTok. And the first time someone I've said that to me, that. I was like, how? What do you mean? I, I how is do, that possible? And it's just, you know. There's a congressperson I follow, yeah. and I get some news about what's going on in Congress from that guy. But in general, I don't. I have been actually liking some fun political vi- videos lately, so I get a little bit of that. But as far as news news, not really. But it'll be real interesting to see what loops can do where it sounds like maybe there wouldn't be an algorithm. I don't know. That'll be that'll be interesting. If it serves me up happy kittens and puppies and dogs and, and, uh, and funny stuff, then I'm all in. And I, I will probably give it a try. But I'm still waiting. I want to get my invitation back. They said they would send it to me, and they didn't. I know. We'll 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 definitely circle back when we're able to play around with loops a little bit. But you know, before we move on, the Fediverse, um, I thought this was kind of an interesting stat. More than eleven point six million users uh, in the Fediverse in general at this point. I know that's you know that's not TikTok numbers, but it's still a lot of people who are interested. Uh, over one million monthly active users. You know, so you've got a lot of folks who are using it regularly. With Mastodon at around sixty five percent of all activity. So lion share still going to Mastodon. You know, a lot of uh, a lot of people at one point looking for you know Twitter alternatives. Just you know, what what else is out there? Um, social so network alternatives, I suppose. It's so, Twitter yeah. with less Nazis. Well, fewer Nazis. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you're probably gonna. I don't know. Uh, yes. So, so. <laughs> but the nice thing about the Fediverse is, you know, it it it's designed to give you more choice. It's less, you know, kind of salacious in general. Yeah. That's that's no, how I the- I see it too. There's nothing pushing the hatred up unless you're following people who are hatred people. True. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely, it's, it's where you're you welcome. go and who you're hanging out with on social networks. You know, that has a lot to do with it. So I think choice is good. That's where we'll leave that one. Um, <laughs> what do you want to hear us talk about on the show? Is it Fediverse stuff? Is it more about Apple intelligence? Is it something else? One way to let us know is in our subreddit. You can submit stories and vote on them at reddit.com slash r slash daily tech news show. So Allison, you 
<laughs> you say you lose your voice nearly every year. Uh, it's happened to me as well. Uh, it's obviously problematic when you're a podcaster or somebody who, you know, speaks out loud uh, for your job all that often. Last year, you used 11 labs uh, to create a synthetic voice. Um, but when it happened again to you this year, um, and I know you're still co- you're still coming off of it right now, although you sound great. Uh, you tried some different services, so so let's talk about those services. Well, I think uh, Joe has a little clip that he wants to play of uh, exactly what it sounded like last week. Let's let uh, Play.ht take over from here. In the olden days, iOS kept everything sandboxed in a way that apps weren't allowed to reach outside of their own data to open individual files. But with the aptly named Files app and an API to allow a human to do the picking, apps can now open files directly on iOS. That is you. Not bad. No, (laughs) it's not bad at all. I mean, you might be like, eh, I wouldn't, eh." you know, the intonation is a little, I would not know the difference. That that sounds like you. Yeah, so I I was searching for a new way to do it. So I asked ChatGPT to give me some recommendations and they recommended two different um, services. Well, I have several different ones, but the ones I chose to look at were Resemble AI and Play.ht. Resemble.ai was, uh, had a $1 plan, a starter plan, just a, you know, for one month you could get it for a dollar. So I figured that would be fun. They had a, a handful of free rapid voices and one professional voice. The professional voice was amazing. Uh, the problem with Resemble AI was that they had very inconsistent rules. Like they said, okay, this ha- you have to give me a WAV file or an MP3 file to train the voice. So I gave it a WAV file and it said, no, you encoded the WAV file wrong. I was like, okay, here's an MP3 file. And it says, no, we don't take MP3 files. Like on screen at the same time, two notifications. One said, we take MP3 files. And then when I gave it an MP3 file, it said, no, we don't take MP3 files. So I ended up taking the MP3 and encoding it with a different application as a wave. And it ended up taking that. Um, It also will only um, transcribe 3,000 characters at a time. And the article I needed it to read was 13,000 characters. So if I was to use this one, I would have had to have uploaded it in seven different chunks. It was also not real clear how to get it to fix mistakes. And it kind of cuts words off. And I want to play a little sample here of uh, of what this one sounded like. I I think Resemble uh, AI was uh, even better. So listen to this one. The best way for me to describe cross-stitching to nerds is that it's like 8-bit graphic. You create a picture using different colored threads where each cross-stitch is a little block. Making a diagonal line of these little blocks would be a jagged line just like in 8-bit graphics. The- you so know, you can hear how it he- cut it off, but it yeah. still it sounded really good. It sounded good. I mean, n- now I'm now I'm listening for it, so I'm like, yeah, it was not quite Allison. But yeah, no, I mean, that... That is, if somebody's, it also depends on, I think a lot of this depends on the content that you're putting out there. If this is like, hey, this is informational and I lost my voice this week. This is a great, great tool. It's a great option for you. If it's something that's supposed to be like, oh, the AI wasn't as personable and funny and, you know, making jokes, you know, as I would have, you know, done then that's sort of a different kind of conversation, right? Well, it was interesting when it, with Resemble AI, one of the things it asked was, what is this going to be used for? And there was a whole bunch of different options. And one of them, like it was uh, games or social media, but one of them was podcasts. So I chose podcast. And then it said, what kind of a voice do you want? And there were a bunch of different, you know, uh, expressive or theatrical. And but one of them was explainer. And most of my work is I'm I'm teaching people things. So that's what I chose. So I was able to tailor it just a little bit in that way. But when I switched over, I I just kept having problems with Resemble AI at first. It took me too long to work with that tool. So I switched over and tried Play.ht. And that's the one that actually made it into the show. The main thing was it was easier to throw in the whole text because I was able to throw the whole 13,000 characters into the text. And then what it did was it broke it up into paragraphs. And so you can see, um, I've got pictures in the blog post that's linked in the show notes where you can see that it it broke it up into these separate paragraphs. And for each paragraph, I had settings for uh, intensity, stabilization, speed, and and it had it, so it had these different settings for each one and how quickly it would run it. Now that was tedious because 
like 37 times I had to go in and set those settings for each paragraph. But it was I was able to just keep regenerating until I got one I liked. Mm. Um, it, the one that you already heard was uh, was from Play.ht, and I did end up using that. But sometimes the voice would go bad. And I'm going to play you a little clip of what I mean by go bad. What are you talking about? You sound so good. <laughs> it's like throat sing. I, I don't know <laughs> what that like, was. That was like some sort of David Lynch nightmare. <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> yeah, that's but, that. You, you don't want that. So yeah. So yeah, but there's you could listen each one and regenerate and get the better one. I don't know why it went bad like every tenth one. But this service was thirty nine dollars for just to do a single month. Um, in general, I think it, it was a faster process, but overall, I would say this is the kind of tool that's useful for maybe somebody paid by the hour because it was tedious. It took a long, long time to do this. I mean, this would have taken me 10 minutes to read out loud. It took me probably two hours to create with play.ht. Well, and I think that that's, that's what a lot of us are grappling with is like, you know, you, you hear all these stories about like, oh, you know, AI is is, is going to make everything so much easier for all of us. And it's like, well, uh, in your experience of doing this, it was an interesting experiment, but would you not have just had a guest host, uh, you know, <laughs> do something for you? I guess it depends, right? If you, if you really think, you know, no, this is my show and, and I, I want to use tools to make it um, if, for, if, if I truly have laryngitis or otherwise I've lost my voice or I can't be there, um, you know, I want it to be me. What do you think? Well, I uh, have a frequent contributor who goes by the moniker Jill from the North Woods, and she actually offered to read one of my articles. So my articles are pre-prepared before the show. So somebody would have to read my words in their voice in order to be a guest host, unless I gave them a week in advance notice. And I didn't know a week in advance that I was going to have no, no voice on that day. Yeah. So it, it's kind of a, a catch-22 there if I'd had some content. A lot of people get content in the can ahead of time. <laughs> I don't bother with that. Everything just comes out on that Sunday night. And uh, so I think I would do it again based on the fact that I did it before and I did it this time. And I'm thinking 2025, you're going to hear me talking about how I did it the next time. There you go. There you go. Um, in the ma mailbag, uh, we have something um, that actually speaks exactly to this to this topic. Eva commented on our discussion last week uh, about real estate ads that sounded suspiciously notebook LM like. Uh, Eva writes, recently you featured that ad that was AI produced and everybody seemed in agreement that it sounded engaging and relatively real. Same for that trial DTNS podcast that you guys made, which we did with Notebook LM as well. You know, we all sort of went like, huh, this is pretty good. Oh no, our jobs are at stake. That was the first run uh, at, and that had good energy and sounded real. But Eva says, I have to admit, from my point of view, they were both over the top to the point of irritation. Maybe a European perspective prefers less hyperbo hyperbole. But I think it's safe to say that currently what's being produced is targeted at an American ear. Eva says, I'll personally always prefer meat suit people to AI produced content and will actively avoid it if given the chance. You know, what, Eva, that is a very good point. That is a very good point because there was definitely a style that we started to make fun of after a while because after the, the initial Notebook LM um, uh, example where we were like, wow, that sounds good. We tried a few more and we're like, oh, well, that sounds exactly the same. Oh, okay, I see. It's the exact same cadence. Oh, it's the two hosts doing the exact same thing. And maybe that is a very regional thing that wasn't even going to be, I don't know, rub, the, the, rub you well if you were uh, in a different region. Well, to use your favorite phrase, we're in early days, right? <laughs> yes, I think are. it's probably, it's certainly going to get better and more interesting. At least I hope so. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Eva. And thanks to everybody who writes in. Keep those emails coming. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Um, thanks to you, Allison Sheridan. We hope you keep coming back to the show because you're always a delight. Let folks know what you've been up to lately. As long as I have a voice, I will. Well, recently I studied a research paper that looked at the reduction in content created on Stack Overflow by people helping each other with programming tasks. Basically, it's been, it went down 20,000 posts 
in six months after ChatGPT was created, when normally it's been going down about 7,000 posts per year, so 20,000 in six months. So the research paper was looking at the effect and whether that really was the effect or whether it was just a correlation without causation. But uh, the reason I bring it up is Barb Bouchatz and I, I had a discussion about this on uh, my episode of the NoSilicast from uh, episode number 1015, linked in the show notes, of course. About 30 minutes into that episode, you can hear the two of us talk about it, and it was a, it was a really fun discussion with an intelligent person that, uh, that I enjoy talking to. Well, uh, thanks for uh, sharing that with the crew. Uh, everybody check that out and come back soon. But we're not done. Patrons, stick around for the extended show, Good Day Internet. Always nice to win a patent war, but at what cost? The answer may surprise you in this case. But just a reminder, you can catch our show live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC. We're still on Daylight Savings Time. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. And we'll be back doing it all again tomorrow, talking about how Tubi is staying competitive in the ever-evolving video streaming market with Charlotte Henry joining us. Talk to you then. DTNS family of podcasts, helping each other understand. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>